Hey guys, my name is Claire Elliott and today I'm going to be talking about beginnings. Last week I made another video about beginnings or one strategy for beginnings that I find particularly useful. I'll link that below. And I wanted to make this other video about another approach that I've heard of. It's a little bit more literary and I have to say that for me I find this less useful, but I still thought that this might be interesting to some people and especially as a way to revise or as a different way to get a framework to your story, it can be really interesting. This strategy for thinking of beginnings also works for thinking about endings, so it can be useful in that sense too, especially for finding catharsis or if you're planning to write a sequel. Here we go, what is this other strategy for beginnings? This strategy for beginnings is to consider your beginning as an end, or conversely, to think of your endings as beginnings. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that unless your story starts with in the beginning of time, there was something happening before your story starts. And so instead of thinking of your story as the start to a story, you could think of your first act as the last act of the previous story. What was the narrative that your character would have been telling about themselves? What was coming to an end in that first act? For instance, in Harry Potter, the story that's coming to an end is the story of him as the poor, magicless, very unfortunate boy. As the first novel starts, his life with the Dursleys as he knew it is ending because he's realizing that things were not as he thought. And so that is an ending to a story that came before. Similarly, when we get to the end of a book, that can count as a beginning because it's the beginning of happily ever after or it's the beginning of the new tyrannical regime set up by your, you know, anti-hero. Whatever's going on, the ending is also the beginning. It's the beginning of the next thing. And if you're writing in sequels, this can be a good way to help set up stories that feel like they fit together while still having their own cycles. I think that this kind of setting your beginning up as the ending of something is not necessarily the most concrete useful tool but it can be really useful for getting in your character's head what are they losing when they go on this adventure what is ending what might they become nostalgic about and at the ending of the book that character is not ending their life unless you know unless they are but uh, most of the time when our characters outlive our novels just because the novel is ending and that might be sad for us readers doesn't mean that life is ending for them. For them, it often will feel like the beginning of something new. And that can be a really uplifting way to end a story, to show that things will go on and that for them, life continues. So that was just a little piece. Uh, I think it's kind of obvious when you hear it, you're like, duh, this is the end and that's the beginning of something else. But it can still be useful to hear it. And for me, it was a really fun exercise to sit with that thought and think about the different stories that belong to my characters. How many other stories are they living? And I have just decided to tell this story and I've bound it as this is the beginning and this is the end. But for my character, they have lived several stories and they will continue to live several more. Let me know in the comments if this is something that might be useful to you and what kinds of other stories your characters have already lived before they step foot on your pages. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a like and subscribe. I make videos on craft topics. I also vlog and occasionally I make video essays where I talk about theoretical topics in writing. And if any of that's interesting to you, make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!